Some roll of milk. I'm sure if I did a lot of blue sky eggs. Uh -oh. oh no. I was gonna say one thing to I have a friend that I went to UT Austin um, summer camp. It was a theater summer camp with Kara, who I would want to be in that. You know, the, well, the character should there be someone else that would play her because I was in my late twenties. But her friend was, uh, and she was my friend too when we were in Austin and we were studying theater back in like 1992. Her name was uh, her name is Natalie Z. She 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 was in La Brea. I don't watch television. I, I do watch internet TV. But anyway, La Brea is three seasons. Hey, the honeymooners were only one season, but she was like a lead role. It's like a big deal. So I knew that she was getting a lot of work, and then I found out it's like an NBC. <laughs> I was like, whoa! And it was like a lead role. So congratulations to Natalie Z, who played Naomi in the living room. A Christopher Durang play, who we all thought was, was was great. It was like my favorite thing I saw when I was there at UT Austin. We were watching all the actors, you know, like we were all workshopping. Here's the crazy thing. I was in Rivers and Ravines production. I played Amel the Fifth. Kara played like a bear in the Kabuki one. But it's driving me crazy who Natalie was. And there was, a, there was one that was at the beginning that was set in like Brazil and it was like all these crazy rain sticks and all these people, volcanoes and all this like crazy monkey stuff. And it was all real wild. Was she in that one or was she the lead in the Kabuki one? But the other dude who was in Dallas, he was the lead of the Kabuki one. I would, I would, if anyone would make a comment or if Natalie Z would make a comment to find out what show she was in at UT Austin, there were three shows. It, it ended with rivers, rivers and ravines. The first one was the, the, like the Brazil show that was like all jungle and stuff. I don't even know the name of it. The second one was called King Stag or the King Stag. That was one Kara was in and she played like a bear that did, she was a gymnast. She had all these like gymnastics in it. And then there was Rivers and Ravines, who I, I was Amel the Fifth. We ended up doing that again. What was the name of the first one? First, it was like Brazil or South America or whatever. What was the name of that one? And which one was Natalie in? I wish I could remember. But I know she's in La Brea, which is NBC. So one on one, we're having some fun. So anyway, I just think that this whole adventure was great. You know, I finally got to tell stories and stuff, but it, it was so exciting when I was at Pascal to get cast as Ben Gatt in La Comer Angel. You know, I, I, I really felt, because I had jet black hair, I was uh, I was like a punk rocker goth kind of person. I gotta go pick up something at Albertsons for Kitty and, and Linda. By the way, we'll, we'll be headed back. See you in a minute. But um, I was kind of a uh, punk rock, goth, jet black hair, kind of like, with not as long hair as Michael and Grim Life Collective, but I was like a, a goth kind of person when I showed up. I was, I was actually a big Morrissey fan is what I was. So when I, I got cast in Look Home and Angel as Ben Gant, which is a lead role, Anthony Perkins played Eugene Gant in Look Home and Angel on Broadway. I was playing his brother, a sickly brother. And everyone just completely loved me and said, you have to be an actor. Everyone told me that. And that, you know, when I played Ben Gant, and I really did like it. We got on Channel 11 News. <laughs> it was a big deal. Well, from there, I got a scholarship, or I got I got in to UT Austin Theater Summer Camp. And I got in the paper, in Austin paper twice, just for doing scene work. Like, like scene painting. Like, shop work. I was, we were, we had to build all the sets. And I got in uh, the paper twice. So I was getting all this attention. And then shortly, where I never thought I was gonna get into college, because I did horrible in high school, all of a sudden, I get this scholarship 
you know, to do this uh, theater stuff. And it was like, wow, I'm actually gonna go to college. And I was, I was a dropout. I dropped back in 10th grade. I dropped out at Richland High School and then went to uh, Pascal High School and dropped back in. And then I ended up going, you could really turn your life around. And then I, I ended up going to Texas Wesleyan on a scholarship where I learned so much about the craft of acting and theater from Ken Stilson and Joe Brown and all those, you know, Connie Whit Lambert. And, you know, I learned about Kubrick from her, you know, Stanley Kubrick. She knew I was interested in film. I don't think they're open right there. 1030. Yeah, I just don't think I'll go out of the way. Um, I did some scenes from Bulb on Pigeon Pigeon 1 with Victoria Hines. She did. She went to AMDA right there in that, that free vacuum where the... Um, it's a $5 car wash. It's a laser car wash. Anyway, we're doing stuff to uh, to Wilco, the band Wilco. But no, I, I was just so amazed that I got to go to college. I only went there for, for uh, like two and a half years, and then I transferred to UNT and graduated, and that's when I took off to Long Beach. But I learned a lot in UNT, man. UNT is a whole different story. I had like a lot of academic training. I, I was supposed to be a professor. If I would have got my MFA from the Actor Studio Drama School, New School University, I would be like a college professor. But I kept writing. This is kind of writing. It is writing. It's publication. It's a voice. I mean, Homer told his story by speaking. So it's just amazing that I got to do all this stuff and like all these little events in my life are such big like movies. The UT Austin things like a big movie. We never thought that. Well, I kind of knew Natalie. I, nothing, you could, you could change nothing about Natalie Z. She was full on movie star for sure. She became a television star, NBC, tele, NBC television, but she did movies too. But she became iconic television star on Passions, soap opera actor. We all knew, they called us the 90210 group. It was Kara, uh, Natalie, and a bunch of other, all these other actors. And I was the eccentric one. I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker, but uh, I would always say sorry two times. And I don't know why. And they'd make fun of me, and I would say, oh, I'm sorry, two times. <laughs> but they ended up doing, like, this kabuki thing. I wanted to be in it, but I ended up being in Rivers and Ravines. And then this is all sponsored, I guess, by my drama teacher, or it was I was found by a dancer named John Templin, who was this uh, colorful, very passionate person who loved, like, all his students. Like, he called his students his baby, or his babies. But it went so far, you know? I never really thought it. Now, now my friend, uh, was another friend I had. His name was Brandon Carter. Now, this is Rob Bosquez, who was like a, a writer friend who also writes and stuff. He's like a playwright and teacher and things and director and things. He directed me in several different plays. I've done like 50 plays or more, but um, Brandon Carter had already got a scholarship to go to NYU for film school. I only visited NYU once for film school, for audited a class on three-point lighting and these small film things, you would not even believe, you wouldn't even believe what they teach at NYU as when it comes to film school. You don't even want to know. It is, an, it's like, it's, it's immense. They learn everything. And you know, why none of them have not become movie star directors, I don't know. Hey, listen, I was talking to this lady just the other day, like, uh, I don't know, a year or two ago. I don't know. It seems like just the other day. Who went to NYU film school. And her name is um, uh, Trish Glipsby. She goes by Patricia or Trisha. And she won an Emmy for uh, The Fire That Took Her. And she was just talking about that. And I thought she was just some oddball film director that just went to NYU for a few semesters or something. And then she started something called Yellow Belly Pictures. But I don't see how n any of them don't become as big as Martin Scorsese, you know? I don't see how any of them don't. Because I went to one class, audited one class, and learned like so much in a few moments. This was back when Schindler's List was going on when I audited that class, and then I came back. The first time I ever went to New York, I was 12 years old, and I would I'd keep kind of like returning there. It was just a weird thing. It was very mysterious. I remember when we, when we arrived in New York City, my sister was there, my mom was there. My stepdad was there, Earl. We were all on a bus and my sister says, I hate this place. This is the worst place ever. My sister hated it. I loved it. I had a big smile on my face, but we thought it was weird that you had to pay $3 for a Coke out of a vending machine. Some of the hotels, this was back in the eighties. 
It was like, I don't know, a couple of dollars. Like, weird. You could put 50 cents and you would get one of those Cokes. You could still do it today. You can, some of these places, you can put 50 cents and still get a Coke. We were putting $2 in a vending machine to try to get a Coke. It was like quarter, quarter, quarter. This place is too expensive. My sister hated it. But I loved it. And then one of my friends, Foster, he lived in Queens. So I'd go back and see him and it was always calling me back. Will I ever return uh, to the city? I don't know. I can tell you this. It terrifies me. I watch Cash Jordan every day. He's a vlogger. Casey Nash thought I'd watch some of his stuff. But will I ever return and see the, you know, the Peace Tower and all that craziness? I don't know. Uh, to me, it's a target. You know, it's just, it's just a personal opinion. I, 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 I'm just sorry. You know, I was there, but I do, lo I do love the place. Though. Well, as I always say, the chubby, they'll cheat on their diet. The lusty, the lusty like mom. And if you file, there's a good chance you could cheat on your taxes. But down here, nobody cheats from the town. See, eventually, when you do a vlog, it begins to write itself. I uh, know. I don't start it. I'm already going. I mean, Jesus love. It starts to tell itself. Right? Okay. Get the picture. C-130. Retired Fat Albert Hercules.
hammer. This thing broke. You don't know how useful this thing is for the show. After I made fun of Adam the Woo in his Back to the Future vlog on Adam the Woo channel, it broke the next day. You can plug in right here and listen to your television. This thing is so useful. Roku makes them. Anyway, I'm gonna have to get another one. Best Buy makes them. <coughs> or the um, Best Buy has them. All right. Yeah. Let's see what that, that is. I don't wanna know. Okay, we got okay. This one, it's Shiba, it's savory, it's the mixed grill entree. What do you think? All right, we'll give her a try. Yeah, it just keeps going. All right, cut here. One day on Christmas, we didn't have a Christmas tree. We just have a box over here around 10 years old. Guess what was on there? The guy and uh, Andrew Bruce or something. I had a I Love Lucy book. And everything. That's why I know Job Switching is episode 93. And then another last episode. My mom loved I Love Lucy. Maybe that's why it's hurt me sometimes. So I don't know. I was totally right over there online today. I really liked to colorize about her dresses and stuff, about the money and everything. But I, you know what? MGM did something really, really well about that. I remember it's not ABC at the time. It was NBC. It was ABC. She did stuff after that. When she divorced, you know, Desi Arnaz, they were married about 20 years. They met on too many girls. That's how they fell in love. Now have that damn picture of you.
Blue sky is. Uh -oh. I know. 